Good morning. Lord, thank you for life and for the opportunity to be here once again. It is indeed an awesome pleasure to be able to deliver another podcast. Where would I be without you, Lord? If it had not been for you on my side, tell me where would I be? Hello to everyone today. This morning, I just want to give a great shout out to all the listeners, all the audience that have attached themselves to me on Facebook or Instagram. Hello, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, Dominica, Jamaica, Africa, United Kingdom, India, U.S. Virgin Islands. Hello and welcome to the United States. I am indeed humbled to be able to say welcome to all of these islands and countries. For those of you listening for the first time, I am Dr. Rita Taylor, author of His Strength in My Weakness, a journey of brokenness, breakthrough, and transformation. A copy of my book can be found on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and ZulonPress.com. If you're in Antigua, please stop by Best of Books or Methodist Bookstore for your copy. Last week, I talked about rebuilding a much needed foundation that starts in our homes. I mentioned the importance of God in the middle of our relationships. I talked about finding who we are so that we could push past negative attitudes that tends to keep us stagnant and most of all, I spoke of how everyone comes into our lives to add to it in whatever shape or form. Today, I'm going to speak further on rebuilding. God has laid it on my heart to speak on such topic because it, because it has become critical for us to build firmer, solid foundations. As I said before, it starts in our homes. Oftentimes, we get into relationships. And before long, we encounter problems. We encounter such things as one person having more money than the other, difference in hobbies, one has children and the other does not, or one more driven than the others. And while these are just a few of the problems we encounter, there's still one major problem that most couples cannot get past. Listeners, that is one where the ratio is 100 to 40. Yes, 100 to 40 happens when one person give 100% of themselves and the other tag along with 40% or sometimes less. Some of us are natural givers and then we end up in a relationship with someone who is a natural born taker. The relationship may start out where you buy the other person a gift for Valentine, birthday, Christmas, or a dating anniversary, because that seems to be a thing now. We're dating for six months, here's a gift. We're dating for a year, here's a gift. You buy them a costly gift and they bring you something which must less value, or they have nothing to give because they said they forgot. Or you have a situation where you're not only paying for everything, but the loving has gotten quite stingy to non-existent. In the beginning, you start the relationship and you were not thinking of past hurts. You gave quite freely, then as time went by, the hurts start to surface for whatever reason and you start to withhold yourself from the other person. The relationship goes on and before you know it, you are still giving and you get nothing in return. Then one day it becomes a question of why are you getting nothing in return? If you're not ready to love another person 100%, do not start a relationship. If you are married, there is no reason why you cannot give all of yourself to your spouse. Listeners, there is something wrong if you are the one who is giving and getting so little in return. It is never okay to be in a relationship where the scale is not balanced. Relationships are supposed to be a two-way street. When a person enter a relationship, it is because they want to be loved and feel loved. Part of feeling loved and being loved entails sharing, giving, and taking. But it has to be the same for each person. Everyone wants to be thought about by their significant other. 
We feel great when our partner comes home with the little things that we enjoy. It is thoughtful. It is appreciated. It is what a relationship is about. But then we must do the same in return so that they could enjoy the same wonderful feeling of receiving. Page 20 of my book goes like this. I wanted so much to feel the way I felt when I was Mary, mother of Jesus. Being Mary not only allowed me to feel good, but I mattered to someone. Now I feel as if I mattered to no one. Yes, I was married, but I still felt empty inside. I wish I knew what I needed. I wanted so desperately to stop feeling the aloneness and the emptiness. Marriage was meant for companionship. How could I feel such void in a relationship that I thought should solve my problem? Never did I imagine I would need to find myself to know who I was and what I wanted. Two was meant to be better than one. But where was my two? Why was it one in my marriage? To be able to give to the other person, you have to learn each other. I often find it humorous when I hear couples who have been together for over two years and live together say that the other party does not buy them anything. Every living person has something that they fancy. It could be chips, a drink, ice cream, pies, could be anything they fancy from cookies to salad. No matter what it is, those are little things that can be picked up from any grocery store and used to surprise your partner with. This is an amazing thing to do if both parties are doing so. When you do this, then you're in a two-way street relationship. This is a part of the bigger picture. In my book, I mention Harry and how angry I was with myself for loving someone who did not love me back the same way. But then I stopped blaming myself. I stopped the self-blame because I knew within myself how to give love. It was not my fault that he could not receive love. Though it hurt me, I knew that I was capable of loving another person, and I did. We as givers teach others how to love us by the way we love them. Sometimes the other person is so self-absorbed that they miss the lesson entirely. Sometimes we're in a relationship and we buy the things our partners enjoy, yet when they go to the store, all they think about is themselves. That is selfish. If you feel that way, then you do not need to be married. Learn your partner so you can give them those little treats that can make a huge difference in your relationship. You learn your partner by listening to them. A small thing such as that can change the dynamics in your relationships. And we need to change the dynamics in our relationship. Today's society are engaging in so many things that they're against the word of God. But that, my friends, are another book for me to write. Sometimes relationships require us to give more than we expect to give. And while that might be true, it balances the scale when the other person meets us halfway. One person cannot be the one giving all the times. It causes hurt feelings. It causes breakups and then the injured party swears to not get involved with anyone again. Let's be mindful of how we treat another person's heart. Let's protect the other person who we say we love by loving them the right way. Let's start by saying sorry for not giving 100% of ourselves and then make a change. Let's give love like there is no tomorrow. After all, tomorrow is not promised to any of us, especially if the corona has anything to say about it. Today, I would like to challenge you to create a two-way street marriage if you're not already in one. Husband, what does your wife enjoy when she sits down to relax? If you do not know, then start paying closer attention to your wife. If you do know what she likes, surprise her with it. Wives, show appreciation and do the same back. Reciprocate. Surprise your husband with the things that he enjoys. Do not think about the arguments you had recently. You should only be thinking of changing the dynamics in your marriage. I've heard people say that relationships should be 50-50. Today, we're going to start a different ratio. 
Listeners, we are starting a 100-100 ratio relationship. We're going to start giving 100% of ourselves to our spouse. What are you withholding for? Why withhold? Love hard. Appreciate hard loving. Give hard love. Withholding love only makes for miserable households. Stop trying to get back at each other for not giving of yourselves. Look backwards and remember how fantastic the beginnings were when you were getting to know each other and you gave all of yourselves trying so hard to impress each other. Go back to giving of yourselves and give equally. I promise you that the dynamics will definitely change for the better. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to make changes in our lives. Thank you that you are gracious God and you withhold nothing from us. Teach us to give of ourselves 100% to our spouse. Teach us to love harder than we hold on to grudges. Most of all, teach us to look backwards and to come forward stronger while we rebuild a foundation based on your word. You are a loving God. You are a much needed God. We thank you and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Listeners love hard life is short. So let's create less conflict and love our spouse. The same person that you're loving so hard on will be the person who will stand by you to take care of you when you are sick. Listeners. One more thing before I go, please do not take others kindness for weakness. Thank you once again for listening to my podcast. I enjoy sharing what God lays on my heart to share. I hope that it will be of use to you as you go about your daily lives. Please remember to follow me on Facebook, Dr. Eureta Taylor, and on Instagram at Dr. Eureta. Stay safe and have a blessed week. Thank you.